Today we'll bring together everything we've learned so far about volatility filters and how these can be used to improve trading system performance, but also show you how you need to match the volatility filter, which of course determines if the system is allowed to trade, with the trigger, which determines the exact point at which trades are opened or closed. And you need to match these up properly in order to get maximum value from the technique. So let's make a start. Last time we looked at an indicator based on the ATR that instead used a relative calculation and discussed why this was a better way of using the indicator than the standard version. We then looked at some real charts and looked at why this is much more suitable to multi-symbol algorithms. And so what we're going to turn our attention to now is using that relative based ATR in conjunction with a trigger. So let me explain what we're looking at. We have two completely separate charts, one on the H1 time frame and the other on the M15. But we're looking at exactly the same period of time. So if you look at the thick red bars either side of the chart, they're both placed on each chart on the same date and the same time. Now, obviously, we've got four times as many bars when we're looking at the M15 chart. So because of the different time frames that we need to use for our trigger and our filter, that's what these charts represent. So the one at the top, which is the longer term time frame, is the volatility filter. So this is the ATR percent indicator that I showed you last time. And then on the M15 chart at the bottom, we're looking at the stochastic, which we're using as a trigger to tell us when to enter and close trades. So let's now look at a few sections of these combined charts in order to understand how the filter and the trigger work together. So we'll start with this section here that has particularly low volatility, as you can see. Now, as I said last time, a lot of systems struggle to perform well when the volatility is low. And this is the reason why. Let's say our trigger is based on the stochastic going from oversold into neutral or overbought into neutral. So you can see here during these periods of low volatility, if we acted on each of those signals that we can see here, because the price action during this low volatility period isn't really going anywhere and it's more noise than anything else, this would mean the profit or the loss from those trades was quite small and any profit that you did make is likely to get eaten up by charges. And that of course is one of the main reasons why low volatility causes trading strategies issues in this way. But let's now look at a area of the chart that has much higher volatility, as you can see by the value of the ATR over here. Now take a look at the stochastic signals that are generated here. And what you'll notice is that if we act on these signals, then we see a real directional change in the price action, meaning that any profit we make is likely to be much larger and will certainly outweigh the effects of charges. Again, if we look at this area over here, which also has high volatility, the same applies. If we start to act on those signals that the trigger is producing down the bottom here, you'll see that there's purposeful price movements that we can then take advantage of. So based on this difference between the low volatility regions and these higher volatility regions, Hopefully, that now makes a lot more sense of what we've been talking about up until this point. And so now, as part of this mini-series on indicators, we've now covered triggers and we've also covered volatility filters. And what this means is that next time, we're going to start focusing our attention on trending filters. 
Now, if anything, the use of trending filters is even more valuable than the volatility filters we've already looked at. Certainly from my experience, the improvements that you'll see by using a trending filter are likely to be much more than you would get from using a volatility filter. So I hope now we've had this episode where we've seen specifically how the trigger and the filter can be used together on those different time frames. This all now makes a lot more sense and everything that we've covered in previous episodes is a lot more understandable. Now, if that next episode on trending filters is already out, then you'll see a link to it right here at the top. If not, then remember to subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll get notified when that's available. And so now until next time, trade safe.